A person who chases two rabbits catches neither. How many students agree with this? All of you? <laughs> this might be true, unless you're Elon Musk. But how, sir? Let me tell you a story. In August 2008, a company named SpaceX launched its third flight of a rocket named Falcon 1. It was a very big moment for everyone in that company. The CEO of the company, Elon Musk, had already announced in the press that the money he had invested in the company would get them only three attempts at a successful launch. If they failed to successfully launch by the third flight, they would have to close the company. All the employees were tense. A failed launch could end their dreams in a moment. The dreams they had been cultivating for six long years. The dreams that had inspired them to work for 80 to 90 hours per week till that time. Mentally and physically exhausted, Elon and the employees looked on. You had that third failure in a row. Did you think, I need to pack this in? Elon Reeve Musk was born on June 28, 1971 in Pretoria, South Africa. He saw the apartheid struggle throughout his childhood as South Africa frequently witnessed events of tension and violence. As a child, he loved to read from very early in his life, he was always spotted with a book in his hands. Sometimes, while his family went out for shopping, they used to discover that Elon had gone missing. Almost always, they found him in the nearest bookstore, sitting on the floor and reading a book. He first came into the public eye in 1984, when his sci-fi-inspired space video game called Blastar was published in the South African tech magazine. He always felt that something about the world is awfully wrong. This belief of his always got reconfirmed in his mind due to the situation and surroundings in which he grew up. From very early in his life, he kept thinking about escaping from his surroundings and dreamt of a place that would help him fulfill his dreams. He saw America as the land of opportunity and fulfilled dreams. He developed a deep desire to go there someday. He did not have a good childhood. He was bullied and beaten up during a majority of his adolescent years in school. The bullies even beat up Elon's best friend in school until he stopped interacting with him. Things were not well at home as well. According to him, his divorced father with whom he lived was not a very pleasant man to live with. Despite all this, he had very firm opinions on things. Once during a debate in a science class, Elon favored solar power and spoke against the use of fossil fuels. He also failed a few subjects in class four and five until he got to know that he would remain in the same class if he did not pass. He never failed in school after getting to know that. In his quest to reach the United States of America, a young 17-year-old Elon left South Africa for Canada. Living in a youth hostel, he spent the next year doing different odd and difficult jobs in Canada. He completed his undergraduate study at the University of Pennsylvania, Canada, after a two-year stint at Queen's University. 
In 1995, Elon, now 25 years of age, moved to California to begin a PhD in applied physics at Stanford University. But he left the program after two days to conquer the web. Immediately after that, he and his brother started a web software company named Zip2, which created a searchable directory of businesses and enabled navigation with maps. It helped people to know the location of their closest restaurant or real estate dealer or any other business being searched for and the turn-by-turn -turn directions to get there. Even when no one was buying the service, Elon did not give up. Soon after, the company started to sell. The efforts started paying dividends as the company did not take long to become successful. In February 1999, Compaq Computer bought Zip2 for $307 million. Elon received $22 million for his stake in the company. Elon had become rich. He was what most people at that time wanted to be, a millionaire from Silicon Valley, USA. But he was on a mission to change the world. How could he stop? Immediately in the next month, Elon invested $12 million of his earnings and started X.com, an online financial startup with a weird name. After a small wait, this startup also started doing well, having a large number of users registering for the service. But the arrival of a fierce direct competitor named PayPal, providing the same kind of service, resulted in both X.com and PayPal spending a lot of money to gain the trust of their users. Finally, in 2000, X.com and PayPal decided to integrate rather than trying to make each other exit the market. But the teams from both startups could not tolerate each other. In late 2000, he lost his position as the CEO of the company, but he did not get angry. He maintained his calm and kept putting more money into the company, increasing his stake in the company. By July 2002, eBay bought PayPal for $1.5 billion. Elon earned about $250 million because of this. Now he had the required amount of money to make all his so-called fancy and crazy dreams possible. After that, he moved to Los Angeles, USA, because he wanted to make an impact in the space industry. Organizations like the U.S. Air Force, NASA, Boeing, etc. had carried out most of their manufacturing and experimentation in and around Los Angeles. When he talked about space, some people thought he meant office space or property deals. He and his team made trips to Russia to find out about the cost of a rocket launch. His close friends thought he had gone mad. To save him from incurring a huge loss, they showed him videos of rockets exploding and tried to convince him not to waste his money on space exploration. But nothing demotivated him from trying it. After efforts to buy rockets from Russians failed, a thought suddenly struck him. He and his team could build the rockets themselves. He immediately made a spreadsheet which listed the detailed cost of the materials needed to build, assemble, and launch a rocket. According to his calculations, he could produce a rocket of moderate size that would serve the market that required to carry smaller satellites and research payloads into space. The rocket could be made at a fraction of the cost of the rockets produced by existing launch companies. When he showed his spreadsheets to his team, they were astonished at the level of detail. When they asked, how did he gain so much knowledge about rockets? The answer astonished them even more. He had spent months reading different books to study the space industry and the physics behind it. Just by reading books and studying the space industry as an outsider, he had gained so much knowledge about it. Along with a small group of very talented and skilled professionals in the space industry, Elon started Space Exploration Technologies, SpaceX, in June 2002 in an old warehouse. SpaceX used to manufacture its own engines and then buy the other components of the rocket from different suppliers. The company aimed to gain an edge over the competition by building a better, cheaper engine and by fine-tuning the assembly process to make rockets faster and cheaper than anyone else. While he was busy and totally engrossed in SpaceX,
His first son, Nevada Alexander Musk, died of infant death syndrome while he was just 10 weeks old. After the incident, he did not talk about the event publicly and engrossed himself even more in SpaceX, rapidly expanding the company's goals. A company named Tesla Motors, started by two engineers in July 2003, needed a lead investor who would invest the $7 million needed to make a test vehicle. That would be their first achievement and give them something physical to show off, which would help them get a second round of funding. The engineers running the company had the name Elon Musk in mind as a lead investor as they knew he was always interested in sustainable energy. So they met him in Los Angeles over lunch. After questioning them about the details for a long time, he eventually agreed to invest. With an investment of $6.5 million, he became the largest shareholder of Tesla and the chairman of the company. Over the next few years also, he kept investing in Tesla, but the team at Tesla was having a tough time handling the costs and modifying the batteries for performance and fire prevention. In the midst of the operational crisis, managerial crisis also kicked in as the company changed its CEO during that period without any success. Leading into 2008, Tesla was running out of money. The cost incurred by the company was much more compared to the cost that was assumed in 2004. At the same time, even SpaceX was sucking in a lot of money to prepare for the third launch of Falcon 1. To save the skin of both companies, Elon started selling his prized possessions, like his McLaren car, and started overseeing all significant purchases at both companies personally. At the very same time, he and his wife divorced, causing even more trouble in times which were already tough. As the next month after the divorce arrived, Elon could see that he had just enough cash on hand to somehow crawl through to the end of the year. Both SpaceX and Tesla would need money to be input at some point to pay the employees, but it was unclear where that money would come from. The global financial crisis of 2008, which was the worst financial crisis after the Great Depression in the 1930s, caused the investors to hold their investments. This made raising money even more difficult for Elon. But when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Elon went into Superman mode, getting hyper about cutting costs and increasing efficiency. At Tesla, where there was an issue with the car's body, Musk dealt with it directly. He flew to England in his jet to pick up some new manufacturing tools for the body and personally delivered them to a factory in France to ensure that the car being manufactured stayed on its production schedule. He ordered his team at Tesla to work on Saturdays and Sundays and sleep under desks until work got done. He also announced that he would not tolerate any ambiguity around manufacturing costs. He had been directly controlling things at SpaceX like this since its inception. Days and weeks passed by like this, and soon it was August 2nd, 2008. Finally, the day came for the third launch of the Falcon 1 vehicle. You had that third failure in a row. Mm -hmm. Did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Elon quickly prepared for the possibility of an issue with the flight by taking on a significant investment, providing SpaceX with ample financial resources to attempt one more launch. Now, there was a real problem at hand. If they failed to solve the problem on earlier flights or any random issue occurred, then game over. SpaceX simply did not have enough money to try a fifth flight. A failed fourth flight would put an end to Elon's hard-earned fortune of $100 million and the dreams of about 400 employees. 
If, however, SpaceX could successfully launch the fourth flight, it would instill confidence on the part of the U.S. government and possible commercial customers, paving the way for even more ambitious space projects. This time, Elon and his team of engineers at SpaceX were too excited and desperate to wait for transporting the rocket to the launch site, the island, via the ocean. He rented a military cargo plane to fly the rocket body to the island, the SpaceX engineers forgot to consider that the pressurized plane would cause damage to the body of the rocket. As the plane started its journey, the team started hearing strange noises coming from the cargo hold. The air pressure pushed against the sides of the rocket, making it buckle. They only had about 30 minutes to do something about the problem before they would need to land. They pulled out their pocket knives and cut away the shrink wrap that held the rocket's body tight. Then they found a maintenance kit on the plane and used wrenches to open up some nuts on the rocket that would allow its internal pressure to match that of the plane. When the plane landed, the engineers divided up the duties of calling SpaceX's top executives to tell them about the catastrophe. It was 3 a.m. Los Angeles time, and one of the executives volunteered to deliver the horrific news to Elon. The thinking at the time was that it would take three months to repair the damage. The body of the rocket had caved in in several places. Baffles placed inside the fuel tank to stop the sloshing problem had broken and an assortment of other issues had appeared. Elon ordered the team to continue onto the island and sent in a reinforcement team with repair parts. With some heroic efforts by the team, the rocket had been fixed inside of the makeshift hangar in two weeks. Eight weeks later, Musk bet the company on another flight. We have liftoff. And this time around, everything worked. Perfect. This was always going to be hard. It is, after all, rocket science.